Ukraine, if the new pro-Western course includes the neo-Nazi ultra-right. The latest clash is the one at the UN between the Ukrainian envoy and the Russians, all verbal, for goodness sake. On the sidelines of the Security Council meeting on Tuesday, Ukrainian ambassador to the UN Yuri Sergeyev blamed the former USSR for fabricating the charges against Ukrainian nationalists before the Nuremberg Tribunal against Nazi crimes. It offends the memory of Russians, Ukrainians, Jews, Poles, and citizens of other nationalities who were victims of the atrocities of Ukrainian supporters of the Nazis, there is a lot of evidence, we will provide it to Sergeyev, the Russian foreign minister responded. It is a story that is more than 70 years old but is still alive in the memory of a country where nationalism and World War II has always been a divisive issue, admits the Russian website Arty, which reports on the curious episode. And it is back in the limelight more than ever now that the ultranationalist neo-Nazis and Russophobes of Svoboda, Freedom, and Pravy sector, right sector or right wing, after leading the maiden protests have gained prominent roles in the new government and control the armed forces, police, justice, and national security. Enough to worry Russia, of course, but perhaps also Europe, where votes are about to be cast in a few months' time and where extreme right-wing parties, more or less dressed in respectable clothes, are gaining positions among the Eurosceptics. At the heart of the dispute is the figure of Stepan Bandera, a legendary fighter for Ukrainian freedom and independence for the Ukrainian nationalists mentioned above, but collaborator of Hitler's Germany during World War II with which he allied himself in an anti-Soviet function in order to win the independence of his country. His fascist organization ONB, contributed to the Holocaust by killing thousands of Jews and Poles and after the war advocated for a totalitarian and ethnically pure Europe while an affiliated movement carried out a failed uprising against the USSR, so much so that Bandera, who according to some sources had become an MI6 agent, was eventually taken out by the KGB, writes the Californian progressive website Salon.com, in a post. February 25, 2014, entitled Is the U.S. in Ukraine Backing Neo-Nazis? And he is neither the only one nor the first to express doubts and ask questions of this kind, see The Guardian on 22-1, the extreme right has infiltrated the protest movement, which does not reflect everyone, time on 28-1, the Kiev protest hijacked by extreme right-wing groups, and International Business Times, 19 halves, and Business Insider, which even links to the Jerusalem Post and Counterpunch.org, various posts, up to the more alternative InfoWars, Global Research and LaRouche's site. All the more so as the involvement of American politics in the preparation of the push that dethroned Prime Minister Yanukovych came to light. Although his regime was degenerate and corrupt, it was still elected by the majority of Ukrainians, see the meeting, back in December, of Republican Senator John M. C. Kane with Svoboda leader Ole Tyen Hybok and with the future president, former banker Arsenyi Yatsenyuk. The Assistant Secretary of State, the hawk Victoria Newland, was then explicitly pointed to that role during a confidential phone call with the U.S. Ambassador in Kiev as well as the photo together with the same characters of Newland, who in December in Washington had declared that the U.S. had invested $5 million in the Ukrainian unrest. Salon adds an American coded to Bandera's story that often escapes, journalist Russ Bellin's book is cited. Old Nazis, New Right and the Republican Part, 1988 After the war, many own B survivors fled to Western Europe and the United States, sometimes with the help of the CIA, where they made alliances with right-wing groups. In Washington, these exiles reconstituted the ONB under the acronym UCA, Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, in good relations with the Republicans, a prominent banderist, Statsko, who supervised the massacre of 7,000 Jews in Lviv was received by Reagan at the White House in 1983. So much so that when the Justice Department launched a crusade to capture and try Nazi criminals, the UCA lobbied and got Congress to block the initiative. And it is still an influential lobby, nor does it hide its reverence for Bandras nationalism. 
neither does Svoboda, the party that played a leading role in the Maiden protests and whose entry into the Ukrainian parliament for the first time in 2010, with 36 seats and 10% of the vote, especially in the Ukrainian-speaking far western regions, where it reaches 40% has provoked statements of surprise and concern from European and Israeli leaders. Two weeks after Nuland declared that Euromaidan embodies the principles and values that are cornerstones of any democracy, 15,000 members of Svoboda promoted a torch-lit demonstration in honor of Bandera in Lviv, the epicenter of neo-fascist activity in Ukraine. A place where they wanted to rename Peace Square, to Soviet a name, Nakti Gal Battalion in honor of the perpetrators of the massacre of Jews in Lviv and Belarus. Its leader Ole Tai Anabak not only claims that against Ukraine's eternal enemy Russia war is inevitable, not only is he an advocate of ethnic nationalism, but he has a long history of anti-Semitic statements, including the appeal he made in Parliament in 2004 for the liberation of his country controlled by the Muscovite Jewish Mafia and he has also lashed out at the organized Jewry, Jewish organization, we improperly translate, that dominates the media and the government, reports the aforementioned International Business Times. He added that in response to Svoboda's anti-Semitic rhetoric, the World Jewish Congress had called for the party to be banned. Moreover, Tiana Box deputy, Yuri Mikalkishin, likes to quote Hitler's propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels whom he admires to the point of having given his name to a think tank he founded. It would be the social nationalist Mikhail Kishin who would be the link between Svoboda and the neo-Nazi militias grouped under the Pravy Sector umbrella, the real protagonist on the ground of the Euromaidan protest. An obscure grouping of autonomous nationalists recognizable by their skinheads clothing, ascetic ways, fascination with street violence, Salon describes it and by the yellow armbands with black runes, Celtic symbols of the ultra-right, plus the occasional swastika. The prominent leader of the right wing and of the Kiev revolt is Dmitry Yarish, former leader of the Trisub, Trident, who has become the heart of the right sector, commander in the field, with his two to three thousand militiamen from all over Ukraine, armed with shields, clubs, and chains stones, Molotov cocktails, even medium-sized catapults, he himself boasted when interviewed by Time a month ago, revealing for the first time the lethal arsenal he has accumulated and saying he was ready for armed conflict. He reappeared in Independence Square on 22nd of February, the day after politics reached an agreement, guaranteed by the foreign ministers of Poland, France, and Germany. In a video posted online he harangues the square in grim militaristic tones, in the one in Salon, see post, he promises to fight against the degeneration of totalitarian liberalism, and to lead his armies to the reconquest of Europe. According to some, joining the pro-European movement is only instrumental. On the Pravi Sector page of the social network Kontakti on 1st of March an appeal appeared to the Chechen terrorist Humorov join the Ukrainians against Russia just as the Ukrainians have helped the Chechens. And Umarov is not just any terrorist, he is Russia's most wanted man, also accused of attacks on civilians such as the one on the Moscow Metro, but also on the UN list. Well, Yarish is the self-appointed vice president of the Security and Defense Council, the body responsible for developing national security policy on the domestic and foreign fronts. Andrei Parubyuk coordinator of the protest's Voluntary Security Corps, has become president. A leading figure in the Orange Revolution of 2004, in 1991 he and Tyen Hybok founded the neo-Nazi National Socialist Party, which later gave rise to Svoboda, maintaining the motto One Race, One Nation, One Fatherland. In 2010 he had the distinction of asking the European Parliament to reconsider its negative reaction to the proposal, presented some time earlier by the pro-Western President Yushchenko, to proclaim Stepan Bandera a national hero of Ukraine. The new interim government under President Yatsenyuk, of the Fatherland Party, has assigned to Svoboda and the right wing of the Pavy sector various ministries and key posts that would ensure their control of the armed forces, police, justice, and national security, see global research. And the first act was the abolition of Russian as the second official Ukrainian language. 
No wonder the Russian-speaking, pro-Russian Ukrainians of the Southeast and Crimea took to the streets and took their own measures. Clearly backed by Putin's Russia, which shares their concerns. Nor are they surprised by calls for the new government to reassure the Jewish community, as Huffington Post USA headlines a well-documented post. And the leader of Svoboda recently wanted to meet representatives of Israel, while soldiers of the Israeli army of Ukrainian origin, who arrived in Kiev to lend a hand, the Blue Helmets of Maiden, do not hesitate to say that they followed Svoboda's orders. But the concerns go beyond Russia and relations with the West, as International Business Times pointed out back in January, before the most serious violence and the precipitation of events. The Svoboda Party is linked to other extreme right-wing groups in Europe through the Alliance of European National Movements, founded in 2009, which includes, among others, the BNP British National Party and Jobbik, the neo-fascist and anti-Semitic Party of Hungary, the Fiamma Tricolor, the National Front of Belgium, the Swedish National Democrats, and various other ultra-right-wing groups in Lithuania, Poland, Romania, etc. It was also a member of the Front National of France, Marine Leopold, and the National Democratic Party of Sweden. It also included Marine Le Pen's Front National, which in 2001, when it gave its party a more respectable appearance, left the European Alliance for Freedom, of which the British UKIP is also a member. What consequences can this gathering of these forces, which are not only Eurosceptic but also ultranationalist, racist, anti-immigrant, anti-abortion and so on, have for Europe? What do Europeans and their political representatives think of Western support for these right-wing extremist parties in Ukraine? A few days ago in the Europarliament Martin Schulz, who is not only the candidate of the ESDP but also the president of the European Assembly, appeared very embarrassed in front of Natalia Vitrenko's provocative questions. The Ukrainian economist, leader of the Ukrainian Progressive Socialist Party, on 25 January together with representatives of 29 Ukrainian parties and organizations had appealed to the UN Secretary, EU leaders, and the United States to stop the looting and incitement to civil war by the guerrillas, and warned against supporting their actions, in fact, you are protecting and inciting Ukrainian neo-Nazis and neo-fascists. In recent days he was part of the Progressive Socialist Party's delegation to Brussels. My party is currently being persecuted, Vidrinko said, along with all the forces and individuals disapproved of by the armed neo-Nazi and terrorist forces controlling Maiden and the parliament. Political figures and their families are being threatened, offices attacked and burned. Are these neo-Nazis an expression of European values? He asked. Schultz, visibly shaken, replied that according to my information, the EU is negotiating with all parties, including Svoboda. I take your complaint very seriously and I will investigate, said the EP president, also saying he was ready to meet Vitrenko separately. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel.